Welcome to the Faith Lift Radio Podcast, where doubt is destroyed and your faith is lifted. Here's today's message from Dr. Glenn. All right, let's go into today's word. And I want to talk to you today about a, a series that we're starting today, Nehemiah, the rebuilt wall, amen, and the rebuilt life, okay? Nehemiah, the rebuilt wall, and the rebuilt life. So let's pray as we go into the word today. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the word of the living God. Spirit of God, I'm asking you today that you will think through my mind and that you will give me supernatural recollection of the word of God that I may speak a word in season to your people. I pray that they will have ears to hear, mind to understand, and heart to receive the word of the living God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. So let's open our Bible, please. Open your Biblions to the book of Nehemiah chapter 1. Now, since I went to Europe and uh, coming back home, I have been listening constantly to the book of Nehemiah from different translations. And I'm listening to it online on YouTube. I've been listening a lot to David Suchet. I love his voice. He's a Brit. Amen. And I love uh, the, diff the, the different version of it as well. But I've been listening to a lot of um, David Suchet. Amen. He played the character Poirot. Amen. And um, he is very, very, very good. Glory to God. So I've, I think I've listened to it now more than 21 times, the whole book of Nehemiah, and have it uh, playing constantly. And I want to draw some life lessons from the book of Nehemiah. All right. And so today and tomorrow, we're going to, go, we're going to look at the book of Nehemiah, amen, and help you to rebuild your life. So I want to read the first chapter, Nehemiah chapter one, please look in your Bible. And follow along with me, verse 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, it came to pass in the month of Chislu, in the 20th year as I was in Shushan, the palace, all right, that Hanani, all right, one of my brethren came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of their captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. I need you to underline that in your Bible. I'm, in fact, I'm going to read again. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. And the wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. The walls were broken down, and the gates are burned with fire, which means that it was an open city, and it was a vulnerable, vulnerable to targets, to attacks. Verse 4, And it came to pass that when I heard his words, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days, fasted, and prayed before the God of heaven. I need you to underline that. And said, I beseech thee, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let your ear now be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before thee now day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which have which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments which thou hast commanded thy servant. Verse eight. Remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If you transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if you turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, 
Though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence, and will bring them into the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now these are, the, are your servants and your people, whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O Lord, I beseech you, let now your ear be attentive unto my prayer, the, to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants. I want you to put on the line. It was not just personal prayer, but it was also corporate prayer. Who desire to fear thy name and prosper, I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him <coughs> mercy in the sight of your of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. I need you please to underline that in your Bible. I was the king's cupbearer. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in Nehemiah's quest to rebuild the wall around the city of Jerusalem, when you read the book of Nehemiah, you'll discover that Nehemiah was faced with a number of opportunities, obstacles, and oppositions. Are you listening? He faced what? And this is what life is all about. You've got opportunities, you've got oppositions, and you've got obstacles. Now, what will you focus on? Are you going to focus on the opportunities? Are you going to focus on the oppositions? Or are you going to focus on the obstacles? But you need to understand that Nehemiah, being a man of God, being a man of prayer, being a man of principle, being a man of purpose, focus on the opportunities. And he rebuilt the wall in 52 days because he was a man who followed God's plan. Can you say amen? He was a man who followed God's plan. So let me say it again. In Nehemiah's quest to rebuild the wall of the city of Jerusalem and to re-erect the gates, the burned gates of the city, Nehemiah was faced with opportunities, oppositions, and obstacles. All right? Or any order that you want to put it in. But he succeeded to rebuild the wall in 52 days, that which had been left in ruin for years. He quickly rebuilt it in 52 days because he was a man who followed God's plan. He was a man of prayer. He was a man of principles. Can you say amen? I'll give you more than that later on. And he succeeded in 52 days. Before I go any further, I want to encourage you today that the part of your life which have been laid in ruin for a long time can be quickly rebuilt if you become a man of God's plan, if you become a man of prayer, if you become a man of principles, if you become a man of purpose. Can you say amen? So that which has been laid in ruin for a long time can be rebuilt quickly if you follow God's plan. Can you say amen? Can you say glory to God? All right. Now, let me give you a little background to Nehemiah. And of course, you know that um, Ezra, along with Zerubbabel, along with Joshua, the high priest, they rebuilt the temple. Nehemiah came after that, all right? Nehemiah was a Jew who lived during the 5th century B.C. in Sushan, or Susa, the capital of the Persian Empire. And here's a very important point for you to note. He was King Artaxerxes' cupbearer. Very important. In fact, the last words in the first chapter says 
for I was the king's cupbearer. Basically, ladies and gentlemen, this means that uh, he was Artaxerxes' right-hand man because in the ancient world, ladies and gentlemen, all right, to be the king's cupbearer was a position of prestige that you had, and the king had ultimate trust in you. And Nehemiah's responsibilities, ladies and gentlemen, was to make sure that the king's drink was not poisoned, because one of the way in the olden days, still happening today, they would assassinate people, all right, to remove a king was through the poisoning of his drink. So Nehemiah, therefore, being the king's cupbearer, was one of the king's most trusted and loyal advisors. All right, but so what, what does that tell you? That tells you that in the king's mind, not only was he trustworthy, not only was he loyal to the king, but the king knew that this man is a man of principle. And I need you to understand that. Nehemiah was a man of principle. Before we, we, before we even read about his prayer life, we discover that, first of all, he was a man who was highly principled in life. Let me just stop right there for a minute. There are a lot of people today who are who call themselves, I'm a praying man, but they have no principles. But a true man of God is not just a praying man, but he also has to be a highly principled person. Are you listening to me now? Are you listening to me? You have to be a highly principled person. Okay? But we see that he was not just loyal to the king, but he also had a passion for his own people. He also had a, what, passion for his own people. So we can see here, this man is a man of principle. This man is a man of prayer. All right. This man is also a man in God's plan. This man is also a man who has passion for his people. Well, before we go any further, let's look at this now. Why? A broken wall. Why a broken wall? Well, the condition of Jerusalem's walls was as a result of the Babylonians' destruction of the city by King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, the king had laid siege to Jerusalem, including the temple, right? And destroyed it because of, in a let me give you a twofold definition of this. Why did this happen? Well, number one, we know that um, <clears throat> the Jewish people rebelled against God and abandoned the ways of God. And the prophets kept prophesying, you need to repent, you need to repent, you need to change your ways. People like Jeremiah and so forth and so on, who were known as pre-exilic prophets. Are you listening? You got to repent. You got you got you got to uh, change your ways, but they wouldn't listen. So eventually, all right, King Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the city of Jerusalem and destroyed the temple. So that was reason number one because God's people abandoned the ways of God. But also, ladies and gentlemen. Another reason why King Nebuchadnezzar destroyed <clears throat> uh, the um, city and the temple of Jerusalem was because he feared that, you, that the Egyptians would cut off his trade routes, okay, or routes to the eastern Mediterranean region. So he invaded and captured the city of Jerusalem to block them. So we can see it's a twofold reason. Number one, is because of God's, uh, God's people or the Jewish people abandonment of uh, God's ways 
of God himself, all right, of God's principles. Many of them became idolaters. Are you hearing me, saints? Now, let, let me show you this for a minute. And you might want, you will, when you read the book of Jeremiah, you will understand why God's people, okay, uh, what state they were in. Jeremiah chapter 36, I'm going to read from verse 30. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of uh, Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out in the day to the heat and in the night to the frost. And I will punish him and his seed and his servants for their iniquity. And I will bring upon them and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and upon the men of Judah all the evil that I have pronounced against it, but they hearken not. They hearken not. Then took Jeremiah another roll and gave it to Baruch, the scribe, the son of Neriah, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the book which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire, and there were added besides unto them many like words. And you'll find this all over the Bible. All right? So you can see there were twofold reasons why Jerusalem was destroyed by King Nebuchadnezzar, all right? Number one, because of uh, the Jewish people, abandonment of God himself. And number two, because they feared that the Egyptians, are you listening, <clears throat> uh, would cut off his trade routes to the eastern Mediterranean region, so he invaded and captured the city of Jerusalem to block them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hope you're catching all this. Now, once you write this down, Nehemiah, his name means comforter. Jehovah comforts, all right? So he is also, he can, he can also be viewed as a type of the Holy Spirit. All right? He can also be viewed as a what? A type of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me now? Because, glory to God, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? And the Holy Spirit as comforter will rebuild your life. He will rebuild the walls of your life. Can you say amen? So Nehemiah means what? Jehovah comforts. So he's a type of the Holy Spirit that will rebuild the wall of your life. Now, here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Ezra, Zerubbabel, Joshua rebuilt the temple inside the city. But on the outside, on the outskirt, the wall was not rebuilt. So, it is possible, ladies and gentlemen, now, with the wall not being rebuilt, it means, or it meant, that they were vulnerable to attacks. Are you listening? Even though the spiritual part was taken care of. And this is where many believers are today. They're born again. They're saved, they love the Lord, the Spirit is taken care of. But the rest of their lives, the gates of their lives, well, what do you have, what do you call the gates of your life? Just like Jerusalem had gates, you've also got gates to your life. What about uh, the health gate? What about the family gate? Are you listening? What about the financial gates? If these are burnt and your walls are destroyed, are you listening? See, the Bible tells you wisdom is a defense and money is also a defense. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand that once you're born again and your spirit man has been recreated by God, you also need to take care of the walls on the outside of your life. And the Holy Spirit is here for us to, uh, for, for him to help you, amen, to rebuild the broken walls and the burnt gates of your life. Some of you right now, you've got a burnt gate of uh, ill health. Some of you right now, you've got a burnt gate of no finances. Some of you right now got a burnt gate of broken family. Some of you right now got a burnt gate of broken marriage. Are you listening? So the Holy Spirit is here to rebuild, uh, to rebuild your life your broken walls, and your burnt gates. It's not enough that the temple on the inside has been taken care of. 
the walls on the outside must also be catered to. Did you hear that? Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Because some of you, all you, uh, you are born again, and we're glad for that. And your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and we are glad for that. All right, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are glad for that, absolutely. But ladies and gentlemen, the walls on the outside and the burnt gates, the burnt gates must also be fixed. Can you say amen? Praise God. So we need to rebuild the walls of our lives and the burnt gates. Can you say amen? Because otherwise we'll be vulnerable to attacks and you'll be an open target for the enemy. So I want to talk to you about that. So while we've got a few minutes left today, I want you please to write this down. So remember, the book of Nehemiah is a book of opportunity, a book that revealed to us about the obstacles, the opportunities, the obstacles, and the oppositions. All right? But <clears throat> they, Nehemiah, praise God, took the opportunities. He took the opportunity to build the wall. What about you? Are you focusing on the oppositions and the obstacles rather than the opportunity? I want you to write this down, please. Someone said this years ago. I read this. Book of Nehemiah can be can be um, put into um, different categories. Write this down. Preparation and prayer. Preparation and prayer. All right. Schedule and support. Oppositions. Obstacles that turn into great opportunities, then sacrifice and success. Let's say it again. Let's say it again. The book of Nehemiah can be summarized in such a way: preparation and prayer. In fact, you want to you might want to put this down this way: plan, preparation. Prayer. Plan, preparation, prayer. Then write the words schedule and support. Then write the words opportunities, oppositions, and obstacles. Then write the words sacrifice and success. On your road to success, there will be some sacrifice. In life, you will meet opportunities, op opposition, and obstacles. You've got to be punctual, schedule, and have a support system. And, of course, the plan, the prayer, and the preparation must be in place. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? Now... I want you to write this down again, and I want you to think about this. Ne Nehemiah can be summarized as plans, prayer, preparation. That's number one. Number two, opportunities, oppositions, obstacles. Number three, schedule and support. Number four, sacrifice and success. So you need to have this four in place. As I come to the end of this message today, that if you're going to rebuild your life, you have to have the plan, amen, God's plan, amen, prayer, and preparation. Number two, you must realize that life is about opportunities, oppositions, and obstacles. Number three, what is the schedule, amen, and the support system. And number four, sacrifice and success. I'm going to leave it at that today. Because I think you've learned quite enough about this today. But then tomorrow I'm going to show you five things, maybe five or six things about 
Nehemiah that you need to be aware of and implement them into your life. Can you say amen? And you will, by the power of the Holy Spirit, rebuild your life. And that which has been laid in ruin for a long time can be rebuilt quickly. Can you say amen? Thanks for listening to this episode of the Faith Lift Radio Podcast. For more information about Dr. Glenn and how to offer your financial support, log on to glennarecchion.org. 